Grower Observations and Adoption of Tunnel Technology was presented by Laura McDermott, Small Fruit and Vegetable Specialist with Cornell University Cooperative Extension. This presentation was made to Extension personnel in November of 2018 at the Great Lakes Fruit Workers Meeting in Ithaca, New York. This work is part of the Tunnelberries Project, sponsored by the USDA Specialty Crop Research Initiative. This presentation will cover grower observations and adoption of low tunnels for strawberry production, high tunnels for bramble and strawberry production, and insect exclusion systems. In 2012, a survey by Penn State of several hundred growers in the Northeast U.S. showed significant interest in primocane fruiting red raspberry production in tunnels, both organic and conventional. The survey also highlighted the barriers to adoption of high tunnel technology, initial cost of the tunnel, catastrophic loss of the tunnel, temperature management issues, harvesting and handling the crop, pricing products, determining management costs, and insect management. At the time of the survey, spotted wing drosophila was not a significant problem, but has become so since then. Researching techniques to surmount these barriers has been the focus of much of the current research, including the research being done by the Tunnelberries Project. Here is a series of low tunnels with day-neutral strawberries in eastern New York. The interest in and adoption of low tunnels for strawberry production in the northeast U.S. is very high. Growers have already been producing day-neutral strawberries in field culture, and they want to use low tunnels to improve the percent marketable fruit harvested and lengthen the harvest season. Growers in New England are interested in low tunnel strawberries, too. This image is from the University of New Hampshire. Growers are experimenting with various tunnel management strategies. Here a grower compared landscape cloth to straw mulch for use as a weed barrier. In addition to more completely suppressing the weeds, the landscape cloth can be used for multiple growing seasons. Overwintering day-neutral strawberries is a challenge in northern climates. If they can be overwintered, then the plants will produce a crop in the second year. In this picture, taken in the spring, the grower overwintered day-neutral strawberries by pulling the low tunnel covers over to the side in the fall and then covering the plants with straw to overwinter. Animal damage to the crop is an ongoing issue. This grower is using bird netting over small hoops to protect the crop. Row cover is also often placed over these small hoops. Caterpillar tunnels are popular among many growers. Growers cover them with plastic or row cover and use them to grow strawberries or sometimes raspberries. Caterpillar tunnels are inexpensive and about five feet tall at the peak. Current grower observations on low tunnels indicate that there is good market acceptance of day-neutral strawberries and equal interest in producing organic and conventionally grown fruit. In terms of the barriers to adoption of low tunnel technology by growers, low tunnels are relatively inexpensive to purchase. Catastrophic loss is not an issue for low tunnels and temperature management is not much of a problem. However, the labor harvesting tunnel-grown strawberries is a significant issue. Pricing the fruit is not a concern. Farm markets are selling between $5 and $6 a half pint for raspberries and $4 per pint for strawberries. The cost of managing low tunnels is a concern. There's a lot of time involved in raising and lowering the tunnel covers to manage temperature. Managing spotted wing drosophila and tarnished plant bug are significant barriers. Additionally, low tunnels do have some issues with anthracnose. While low tunnels offer significant advantages to strawberry farmers, there is even more grower interest in high tunnel production for specialty crops, including brambles. High tunnels offer flexibility and insurance to growers of many high value crops and expertise of managing this technology has improved dramatically. 
single bay tunnels with landscape cloth between the rows is a typical configuration. This series of multiple bay tunnels is actually located in Quebec, where tunnel production has rapidly expanded since 2010. The result is that locally produced berries dominate Quebec markets and imports are few during much of the year. Blackberries are also suited to high tunnel production, as seen here. Temperatures inside tunnels on very warm days can impact fruit set. If tunnels aren't vented properly, temperatures can increase to the point that the fruit aborts. Pollination inside tunnels is a concern. To address this issue, bumblebee hives are introduced to tunnels since bumblebees don't mind working in the enclosed environment. Diseases not usually seen in field production can occur in the tunnel environment. These berries may be infected with sooty mold or cladosporium or possibly both. Spider mites are a common problem in tunnels. Fertility problems can occur too. Here, potassium deficiency is the issue. Protected culture is being used across the country and throughout the world. Here, strawberries are being grown in high tunnels in Georgia. While there aren't any growers in eastern New York growing in-ground strawberries in high tunnels, we are seeing growers try container-grown strawberries under tunnels. Soil-borne pests and diseases take on special concern in tunnel systems since crops aren't easily rotated. The strawberry roots shown here are showing symptoms of root knot nematode. Another issue that has been observed is uneven fruit ripening. The cause of these symptoms is not clear at this time. Current observations of high tunnel berry production indicate that tunnels are used extensively for primocane fruiting red raspberries and there is equal interest by growers in both organic and conventional fruit. Barriers to adoption of high tunnel culture include the initial cost of tunnels, but not so much the cost due to catastrophic loss. Others include temperature management, harvesting and handling, pricing the product, determining management costs, and insect management, particularly spotted wing Drosophila. Protected culture doesn't just refer to plastic films and mulches. Insect exclusion netting is also a form of protected culture. Exclusion netting, shown here at the berry patch in Stephentown, New York, is an effective method of excluding spotted wing Drosophila from the crop, but the ideal structure to support the netting is still being developed. In this organic UPIC operation in Poughkeepsie, New York, the grower found that customers were reluctant to enter the tunnels covered with exclusion netting. Therefore, lack of customer acceptance may be a barrier to adoption of exclusion netting in UPIC operations. Exclusion netting can increase the temperature inside a tunnel. To manage temperature, lift the plastic sidewalls but keep the exclusion netting across the opening. This allows a greater amount of air to move past the plants. Also, a knee wall of four feet high instead of three feet will make a big difference. Still, in very warm climates, shade cloth and additional fans may be needed. Methods of preventing crop damage by insects and vertebrates can get overwhelming. At this site, the berry crop is protected with exclusion netting, bird netting, and deer fencing. The cost of the netting and the complicated design of this structure could prove to be a significant barrier to adoption. A structural design that will be readily adopted by growers needs to be both simple and effective. Current observations for exclusion netting indicate that blueberry production is the best fit and organic growers are most interested in this technology. Barriers to adoption include the initial cost of the netting and the design of the support structure. Catastrophic loss of the netting is not a concern of growers, but temperature management, 
and customer acceptance in UPIC operations, pricing products, and determining management costs are all potential adoption barriers. Overall, exclusion netting is an effective tool in preventing infestation by spotted wing Drosophila. To summarize the current status of protected culture technology, Northeast U.S. growers are interested in all types of protected culture. Adoption of low tunnels for strawberry production is increasing most rapidly since the entry costs are relatively low. Use of exclusion netting is increasing as a means of managing spotted wing Drosophila. Growers are also adopting high tunnels for bramble production, but this is proceeding more slowly due to the relatively high entry costs. The arrival of spotted wing Drosophila has meant that most time and resources have been devoted to meeting the challenge posed by this pest. Consequently, tunnel technology adoption has been significantly delayed. The current risk involved with adopting tunnel technology is that local markets are being overtaken by both domestic and international imports. However, the rewards of tunnel production can be significant for Northeast growers.